Hi, my name is Randy Von Bosi, and this is Kaysville Condensed. I attended the March 15th City Council meeting and this is my report. The evening began with a great sesquicentennial kickoff for our 150th anniversary here in Kaysville. There were some amazing kids that sang. I believe there was a recording of that that was done ahead of time so that if it's something that you want to hear, you can contact the city and get more information on that. Um, the meeting had a lot of interesting parts to it. There were a lot of presentations. I wanted to touch base a little bit on the presentation by Chief Oberg, our Chief of Police here in Kaysville. He did give a report on what the last year has looked like here in Kaysville, the 2017 year. The report was extensive and you can get a copy of that from the city. I wanted to just show you this one page of it to kind of give you an idea of what the demand on our police department looks like here in Kaysville. There is a great need coming in for people to seek police assistance. It's not always dramatic cases, although some of those have existed over the last year. You can kind of see through this report that there were a number of items that were called in most uh, often for. But I also wanted to mention that just um, a few months back at the beginning of the year, the city was able to hire enough staff in their police department that they were able to dedicate a full-time traffic officer. I'm certain many of you who are watching this have noticed that there uh, has been an increase in tra traffic stops here in the city recently. I know that my opinion is probably not the popular opinion, but I was actually really excited to see this and I, I am excited to see um, focus on this continue. Not because I feel like we have a great problem with speeding or any of those other things here in the city, although some of that does exist, but because as I have gone through my training over the last year, what I have been told and, and seen myself over and over again is that the more often people see police out in our community, the more likely we are to deter uh more severe crimes here in our community because people know that our police are there and active. So the more often we have those police officers out there monitoring traffic conditions, it also has an inadvertent effect on the crime in our city. And I think that is a wonderful thing that our city is aware of and focusing on and, and trying to make that presence known so that they can continue protecting us. I am extremely grateful for that. Throughout the meeting, there were some discussions about different uh, plat approvals that were coming before the city council. And to that end, uh, under one of the work items was a proposal to change how plat approvals are handled here in the city of Caseville. Previously, this has been a process where any new plats, meaning any proposals for development, would first come to the planning commission with a public hearing um, and they would make a recommendation and pass it on to the city council for that preliminary plat approval. That's just a general idea of what they would like to do in the scope of building. Uh, if the city council approves that, then it goes forth for uh, final plat approval, which means the developer then works on kind of the nitty gritty, the size of pipes that are going to be laid or how wide the streets are going to be, et cetera, et cetera. So that all comes into the final plat. Once the developer has that in place, they then come back to the city council and the city council uh, approves or denies that final plat before construction can begin. The discussion at the meeting last evening was just dealing with whether we want to continue doing that same process of the city council seeing all of those plat approvals or if we feel like our ordinances and codes are clear enough that that could become an administrative decision that we could give those responsibilities to the planning commission to look at the code and look at the ordinances and make sure everything checks off and then give that approval. There was some hesitation by many of the council members about just giving that responsibility completely over to the planning commission who are appointed rather than elected. After much discussion, it was decided that they would move this item into a uh, action item for the next meeting in a month, that it will come back with a proposal to just have uh, the final plat approval only go to the planning commission. So preliminary plats would still come before the city council for discussion and just as a second set of eyes to catch if there's anything that doesn't quite work right. And then uh, final plats would just go to the planning commission for approval. 
the meeting went on to continue in our roads discussion that's been going on for a while. We are getting close to the end of this discussion and so I wanted to give you some of the final details on this. Our city manager Shane Scott did delve into some of the details of where our city budget is right now. For those of you who don't know, we have about $16 million that works as our city budget right now. Some of it comes from all different directions, sales tax and property tax, and we do have what's called a C-Road fund. That comes in from the state. It is uh, collected on gas tax that we get in from the state to help pay for our roads. Previously, that's been about $900,000 a year. There was an increase on this recently, and this last year we saw that increase coming in at about $1.2 million. So that that is our sea road funds that we previously have relied on for road maintenance but as we are now seeing there's projections that that is not going to be enough to do the repair that we need plus the maintenance that we need going forward um, I wanted to just show you this graph that Shane Scott our city manager showed at the meeting just showing the tax trend over the last 10 years. This does take into account the bottom line is the property tax and the top line is the sales tax. You can see that our property taxes remained pretty stagnant for um, about six years and then we did see a spike in our property taxes in 2014. This was almost a doubling of our property tax and that doesn't mean that the city budget doubled, it just means that our out of pocket as, as property owners doubled and then the city got their portion but a, a lot of that doubling went to county things or um, just different areas that our uh, property taxes are divvied out to. So when we did get that big increase in 2014, a big chunk of that actually went to hiring personnel that we had not been able to hire for that six years previous, um, new police officers or firefighters or just general personnel within the city to handle the running of a city of our size as there was a tremendous amount of growth during that time as well. The sales tax, there was a little dip during the recession. You can see it's been climbing since then. We're doing very well right now in our taxes. Uh, the Mr. Scott also showed a property tax comparison. I just wanted to show this to you to let you know that taking into account the other cities here in Davis County, we are the fourth lowest of what our property taxes are here in Kaysville. So with the quality of life that we have here, many would say that that's actually doing pretty good. I know that there are many who would rather be at the bottom end of that scale, there are some who would rather pay a little bit more to have a few more amenities, but that is where we are currently at. Uh, as we look at our general budget going forward and what we would like to put into roads, um, the staff was able to kind of put together this idea of where money has come from. So our last fiscal year, which is from uh, July of 2017 to July of 2018 we had our sea road funds come in at 1.2 million dollars and then there was some reserve that was left over in those sea road funds from previous years so we were able to pull in an additional four hundred thousand dollars so this last fiscal year we put about 1.6 million dollars into roads next year we want to as a city try and really tackle a lot of the bigger roads that are needing some attention right now so as the staff has looked over the budget and as they have looked over what some of our reserves are, our reserves are basically anything that's left over after our fiscal year that didn't get spent in the way that we thought it would. We can put that into basically a savings account. Uh, state statute requires that we have at least 5% in that reserve, but no more than 25%. And right now our reserves are sitting at about 23%. So that does leave some room in that general fund reserve to transfer over to use for roads. So next year we're looking at the 1.2 million in C road funds. The city is proposing transferring over 1.2 from that general fund reserve. And then if this road fee passes, that would add in an additional 1.1 million, bringing the total up to 3.5 million that we can put towards roads next year. And then the years going forward, the projection is we would still have that 1.2 from the C roads. We would have the 1.1 from the road fee. And then the hope is that we would continue having excess or money that we could 
have from our reserve transfer over to that road fee. We're projecting at least $200,000 that could be transferred, bringing our total up to 2.5. But maybe some years it will be more and maybe we'll be able to get more done. Or if it's more, then maybe we can lower the road fee so that not as much is being asked of the citizens. So uh, Josh Belknap, our public works director, did comment on what to expect going forward, what his plan is. And his priorities right now are to keep our inventory current, to use better material and methods, to plan for targets of opportunity, and really have a good pavement management plan so that we aren't letting roads get too worn down. So that is what that ongoing money would be meant for as we get everything under control. So this was, the road fee was moved by a majority to come forward as an action item on the agenda in the middle of April. I wanted to just give you a brief overview of what that will look like. So the road fee, as it is currently proposed, would have a residential use for single family dwellings. That will be $7.85 per unit per month. Multifamily dwellings would be $5.45 per unit per month. That is per unit, not for the entire complex. Um, commercial would be an average daily trip model. Uh, they're calling it the 369. So the section one would be if there's uh, uh, less than 10 daily trips to the f commercial facility, it would be charged a $3 per thousand square foot fee per month. The next category would be 10 to 15 daily trips would be $6 per thousand square feet. And the highest Commercial category would be greater than 26 daily trips would be $9 per thousand square feet. The current model also includes a public use fee for schools and churches that would be $4.50 per thousand square feet. A couple other things in the discussion have been that all the road monies will go into a road enterprise fund. That just means that it's basically like a business account. It can't be transferred easily back and forth, that it will be accountable to roads. So anything that is being spent on the roads, any revenue that is coming in from the roads, any monies coming from the general fund will all go into this enterprise fund. There will be an annual review of what projects have been completed with the fund and then a report on what projects are slated for the coming year. There will also be an annual assessment of the general fund revenue that can be transferred to the road enterprise fund. So that idea of that at least 200,000 out of the general fund, hopefully that can be transferred over to roads. And also a requirement that anytime there is a change in the fee that there will be a public hearing. So that will go onto the agenda as an action item to be voted by our, on by our city council in the meeting in the middle of April. Uh, last thing I wanted to mention is that we do have our annual Easter egg hunt. If you look on the city webpage, it actually says it's on March 31st from 9 a.m. to 9.10. <laughs> uh, last year, Mayor, Mayor Hyatt said it was the shortest city event that you'll ever see. Uh, but it is a great time. The kids really love it. So if that's something you're interested in, come to Barnes Park by 9 a.m. on March 31st. Thanks for listening. We'll have more later.